Okay, what we have here is a pneumatically controlled valve. At the top is a diaphragm and air coming into that valve pushes down on a kind of like a piston rod to open and close the valve down the bottom. That valve might be used to control the flow of water. So on one side you have water pressure coming in, on the other side the water comes out of that valve and we can control the water flow through that stem. Actually the term for that is a, a stem. So the air comes in, pushes down in the stem and opens and closes that valve. But it's a linear control valve so it's, it can be 25% open, 75, 50, whatever you might, might want to have. Now if we want to control this with a programmable logic controller, we have to convert an analog signal to a pneumatic signal. So that's what this little device to the right is doing. It's called an electro pneumatic transducer. It controls, converts, sorry, an electrical signal to a pneumatic signal. And the electrical signal range is 0 to 10 volts and it converts it to a pressure in the range of 3 to 15 psi. The reason it's not 0 psi is that uh, a lot of pneumatic systems always start at 3 because that way we can detect if there's a leak in the system it'll go to 0 psi and not be at 3. So it's 3 to 5. So right now the gauge is showing me 15 psi and I'm going to uh, keep the camera looking at the uh, gauge but I'm going to control the voltage. Right now it's about 9.5 so that's why it's about 15. I'll get it to go right up to 10 now. Okay, so it's about 10 volts, the pressure is reading 15 psi, and I'm going to reduce the voltage. So I should, if I go from 10 down to 0 volts, I should go from 15 to 3 psi. So I'm going to start lowering the voltage, and uh, you're going to see that valve change. Now the other thing is there's a stem with an indicator on the valve that points to the position of the valve, whether it's open or closed. It's a little metal plate that comes out toward the edge of the valve. So when I reduce the voltage, you can see that that's uh, changing position. It's dropping the pressure, keeps going down, and you can see the valve is moving upwards because the pressure is, is going downwards. And there's a spring internally to control that position. So I'm at zero volts and the pressure is three psi. If I go up to 10 volts again, that pressure is going to go up to 15 psi again. Okay, and on the <coughs> the E to P transducer, you'll see three LEDs. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but there's an LED indicating that the pressure is being dropped, an LED indicating that pressure is going up, and an LED that indicates that it's powered. Because to the left and to the right of the transducer are two solenoid valves. One's allowing air to come in to increase the pressure. The other valve allows air to exhaust to decrease the pressure. So those lights will indicate which solenoid valve is being activated. So the light that's on right now is allowing the pressure to escape. And the lights that's on right now is adding pressure. Okay, and at, uh, about 10 volts right now. Okay, once the pressure stabilized, the only reason you're hearing that click every once in a while is because probably there's a minor leak somewhere and it's just adding a little bit of air to maintain that pressure. Okay, so this is a triple DC power supply and it's a really smart power supply. We just got it recently and it's very useful for setting current limiting and voltage. So when I come up to this power supply, the first thing I want to do is set up the voltage. And I'm going to start with channel 1 and press V set. And the flashing light indicates that I've set the voltage for 10 volts. If I want to change it, if I want to go uh, down to a different voltage, I can just move this dot. But I've set it up for 10 volts right now. And you'll see down here that it's got the letter CV. That stands for constant voltage. So what I did was on channel 1 I would have set the current to a limit value of 50 milliamps, 0 0.05 amps. And if the current starts to get too high, it will automatically drop down this voltage. So we never get more than 50 milliamps flowing through the wires on that channel. Same thing for channel two. 
I've set channel 2 for current limiting of 0.4 amps or 400 milliamps. So if we do get over 400 milliamps, the output voltage, this 24 volts, will drop down. And you can see that I've got channel 2 V set for about 24 volts. I can readjust it a little bit. Okay. And when it's running, when it's not flashing anymore, it's telling me the current down at the bottom. So this is only drawing about 1 milliamp at 10 volts. And this one's drawing 33 milliamps at 24 volts. And you've got to make sure that if you want to adjust channel 1, you've got to make sure that this is pressed. This light will have a little bar underneath the number that you're adjusting. And now I can get this voltage to come down. And you can hear that the valve is opening up to exhaust the air because I'm at 0 volts. And if I go the other way, the air is increasing, the valve is changing position, and I can go all the way to 10 volts.